Welcome to the mirror of the word. It's time to locate ourselves in the word of God and move to another level of glory. Our goal is to become more like Jesus. I pray that you will find what was written about you in the word of God today. And this will help you to lead your purpose and do the will of God. My name is Buki Adioshun. I am delighted to bring you the word of the Lord today. And I'm your regular host on the program called The Mirror of the World, where we read a chapter of the Bible and we pray for those who are sick. Um, I want you to note something that um, Jesus didn't let anyone read what was written about him in the Bible. So you shouldn't wait for someone to get a revelation for you and tell you what God said about you in the word of God. Jesus went to the temple, he went there at the right time and found the scripture that was written about him in Luke chapter 4 verse 21. And he, he told them, he said, this day is this scripture fulfilled in your eyes. Do you know that um, there are some things written about you in the Bible? You just have to find them out and that's why we're doing this program. We want to locate, we want to find what God said about us, because we know when we do, then the Holy Spirit is going to transform us into whatever we find in the Word of God. Paul the Apostle did the same thing. He found himself in the Bible and he acted quickly. I pray as you get a revelation from the Word of God today, you will act quickly in Jesus' name. We've been doing a series on covenant and in the past few videos we've been talking about the blood covenant and in the last video we looked at communion now i want to encourage you to go onto our youtube channel to look at some of the videos that we've done uh, there's a particular scripture a golden scripture that i want you to go back over and over again and that's psalm 25 verse 14 it says the secret of the Lord belongs to those who fear him. Then he would teach his covenant. Um, one translation of the Bible says, he will show them the true meaning of his covenant. You know, bearing in mind that Psalm 89 verse 34 says, um, my covenant will I not violate, that's God speaking, nor alter the things that have gone forth out of my mouth. I have found out in the Bible that God do things on the basis of his covenant. So sometimes it's just not enough for us to whip up sentiments or, you know, for us to try to impress God. We just have to find out, you know, uh, what he says is in, in his covenant. And uh, we can be connected to the covenant that is in place. So, for example, we're connected to the new covenant by the blood of Jesus. And we can also have a covenant relationship with God. Just like God said in the book of Isaiah chapter 55 verse 3, that if you listen, he said, come and listen closely to me, and I will make an everlasting covenant with you. I pray today in the mighty name of Jesus that the Lord will open your ears to hear what was written about you. The Lord will open your eyes to see what was written about you in Jesus' name. And then we moved on to communion, an important covenant, you know, and uh, we said two things which I want to repeat over and over again, and I want you to please, you know, remember this. Um, we said something about the bread that we eat. You know, Jesus took the bread, you know, I will say some things about this later on. Um, when we take communion, uh, we become unified with Jesus. And I love one translation of the Bible. We read that in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, talking about uh, the cup of the blessing that we drink and then the, and talking about the bread. He said that when we take communion, we don't reduce Christ to what we are. He raises us up unto what he is. You know, he's seated in glory. So uh, we don't bring him down to our level. But rather what happened, he raised us, you know, just like the Bible says that he gave us a joint sitting. Every time he looked down on us, his purpose is not to come down, 
his purpose is that he looked down on us to raise us up to the level you are. So I want you to know something today that wherever you are, whatever level you are, as long as you are not promoted to glory, the Lord is going to raise you up in Jesus' name. So today we're going to be reading 1 Corinthians chapter 11. Um, uh, like my people, where I am, is they say 1 Corinthians. The first time I heard that 1 Corinthians, I'm like, what's 1 Corinthians? Well, 1 Corinthians and 1 Corinthians, they are one and the same thing. So I'm going to be reading from the King James Version of the Bible today. And I want to encourage you, please get your Bibles. And let's read together. And please, I keep saying this. I really love to see your comments. What minister to you from the word of God today? Because I want us to do this together. Let's go. Be ye followers of me, even as I also I am of Christ. Now I praise you, brethren, that you remember in all things and keep the ordinances as I deliver them unto you. But I will have you know that the head of every man is Christ, and the head of the woman is the man, and the head of Christ is God. Every man praying or prophesying, having his head covered, dishonored his head. But every woman that pray or prophesy with her head uncovered, dishonor her head. For that is even all one as she were shaven. If the woman be not covered, let her also be shown. Um, but if it be a shame for a woman to shave her head, let her be covered. For a man indeed ought not to cover his head, for as much as he is the image and glory of God. But the woman is the glory of man. For the man is not of the woman, but the woman of the man. Neither was the man created for woman, but the woman for the man. For this cause ought the woman to have power on her head because of the angels. Nevertheless, neither is the man without the woman, neither the woman without the man in the Lord. Praise the Lord. Mm. For as the woman is of the man, even so is the man also of the woman, but all things of God. Wow. Judge in yourself. Is it not commonly that, commonly that a woman pray unto God and cover? Doth not even nature itself teach you that if a man have long hair, it is shame unto him. But if a woman have long hair, it is a glory to her, for her hair is given her for a covering. But if any man seems to be contentious, we have no such custom, neither the, the churches of God. Now in this that I declare unto you, I praise you not, that ye come together not for the better, but for the worse. For first of all, when you come together in the church, I hear that there be divisions among you, and I partly believe it. For there must be also heresies among you, that they which are approved may be made manifest among you. When you come together, therefore, into one place, this is not to eat the Lord's Supper. For in eating, every one taketh before other his own supper, and one is hungry, and another is drunken. What? Have you no houses to eat and to drink in, or despise ye the church of God, and shame them that have not? What shall I say to you? Shall I praise you in this? I praise you not. For I have received of the Lord that which also I deliver unto you, that the Lord Jesus the same night in which he was betrayed took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it, and said, Take it, this is my body, which is broken for you, this do in remembrance of me. After this same manner also he took cup, when he had sobbed, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as oft as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do should show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. He that eat and drink unworthily, eat and drink damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. And if we will judge ourselves, we should not be judged. 
For when we are judged, we are chastening of the Lord that we should not be condemned with the world. Wherefore, my brethren, when you come together to eat, tarry one for another. And if any man hunger, let him eat at home, that ye come not together unto condemnation, and the rest will I set in order when I come. Praise the Lord. Um, quickly, um, it's interesting because I love this passage. This is one reason why um, you know, uh, people don't take communion as often as they sh should do. Uh, reading this passage and some people are even scared or they are afraid of taking communion uh, because they say that you know if you eat it unworthily you you are liable you can you can die something can happen to you and you know and that's the letter of the word which in itself is right you know and um, I just want to encourage someone that you know sometimes when we are reading the Bible we don't just um, especially, you know, I want, I want to say this. Something we ought to appreciate about preachers sometimes is that um, it takes hours to prepare for a 30 minutes message. So, for example, for me to come online and do this session, I have to prepare for a minimum sitting down of one hour. I just need it, a minimum. That's the barest minimum. So, for me to now compress what I have studied in one hour in 30 minutes, you can see that you may not get the full picture. So that's why sometimes, you know, you need to listen to a teaching from a man of God consistently, you know, so that, you know, there's opportunity for recap and some points are clarified and re-emphasized. So sometimes when we are reading the Bible, it's not just good for us to read, you know, um, just a verse of the scripture and then just run away. So if you read this 1 Corinthians chapter 10, it's possible for a man to quickly run away and say, look, uh, the woman is made, you know, uh, for the man, you know, and not the and not the woman for the man. Yeah, sorry, the woman is made for the man and no man for the woman. So because of that, uh, the 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 man should lord it, you know, um, uh, over the woman. But if you read verses eleven and twelve, you know, uh, the spirit of God just impressed it upon myself, to, uh, my heart to just. Share that he said, um, he said, for as the woman is of the man, even so is the man also by the woman, but all things are of God. Again, when you read Ephesians chapter 5, that men use quite a lot, and some preacher use quite a lot to just put women under, they said, uh, wife must submit to their own husband. And by the way, he said, he didn't say they should submit to all men, he said, submit to their own husband. So that there can be order in the house. But the first, the first that precede that is uh, submit yourself unto one another. So you can see that that you know uh, the woman was not created less than a man. You know, I don't have the time to go into this. If the Lord give us the grace to begin to read scripture along that line, I will sh we will see it in Genesis chapter one and we'll go through the scripture to illust illustrate this. That's the first point, you know, that I want to kind of say uh, today from the chapter of the Bible we've read today. Now, the second thing I want to say is that the hair of a woman is given to her as a covering. Again, this is another doctrine that, you know, I once entered a church and then a sister just came with a beautiful, lovely hair, was about to enter the church and the sister just rushed quickly and just give, gave the sister his calf, you know. It was almost becoming an embarrassment. It was even, I think, the person came into church during the time of praise and worship, maybe she's got something on her mind, you know, and she just wanted to go in. Of course, I think, you know, at the end of the day, the sister have to turn back, you know, because she wouldn't want to cover her head. Then the question is that, oh, yes, what's more important? Somebody coming to receive the word of the law or the covering of the air? So, again, because we don't read the scripture into details, you know, it's difficult for us to 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 create i mean it's easy for us to create a doctrine and make people live by that doctrine so from this chapter verse 15 say here to say that you know but if a woman has long hair it is her ornament and glory for her hair is given to her for a covering now i'm not going to say too much on that if you got a problem with that statement that the hair of a woman is given to her as a covering so really uh, the scripture is talking about a woman covering her head. So if the Lord has already given her 
her hair with the long hair as a covering what other covering does that woman need you know um this is not an, an opportunity for you know the sister to shout and say preach pastor you know yes yes we don't want to wear any scarf we don't want to tie any head gear or anything like that i'm going to say this until the lord gives you a different revelation there is no need for you to walk under condemnation whether you are tying your you know tying scarf or something um brand your head or you are not doing it there's no need for you to walk you know in condemnation after all the scripture didn't say if you don't do that you're not going to enter into the kingdom of god because you are already in the kingdom of god you know uh so that's not going to make you uh not to get your reward i mean i haven't read that i haven't read that in the scripture the only thing is saying that you dishonor yourself you know so um there's no need for us to argue over that you just talk to god and pray to god and say lord what will you have me do can you explain this scripture to me open my eyes and give me revelation with regards to this particular word now let me now go into into the main thing we are looking at which is communion in itself uh, the first thing i want to say is that paul got a personal revelation of the lord's table now i love some things when i read the epistle of paul you know there's just something that you know things that he really encouraged me every time I read Paul letters. You know, sometimes I just wish that Lord help me, give me the grace to be able to write like, you know, uh, Brother Paul, you know, um, Apostle Paul. You know, he, he says some things like this. He said, the gospel that I preached. <laughs> he said, I didn't learn it from any school. I love that. He said, they were personally, you know, revealed or delivered unto me. And here he comes to communion and he said, I got a personal revelation. This was something that God gave me. Now, let me read verse 23 of 1 Corinthians 11 that we read in Message Bible Translation. Say, let me go over with you again exactly what goes on in the Lord's Supper. You know, he wasn't there. You know, uh, he wasn't there. He wasn't among the 12. But, you know, the Lord revealed it to him. And that tells me something that if God can reveal something to Paul, if some things can be delivered personally unto Paul, I'm going to believe God that God is going to deliver some things personally to me too. You know, and you may say that, oh, but, but why? But why? So the why there is that why did God deliver it personally to Paul? Because I, we know that, you know, everything that Jesus did and said, there's no way they can put it together into a book as Bible. We won't be able to carry it all over the place. So. There are more that Jesus said, you know, that were not recorded in the Bible. And um, even, even if they were all recorded, Jesus himself said, there are many more things that I want to tell you, you are not able to bear them now. So how will I know about those things, you know, if I don't ask him to deliver some things personally to me by the Holy Spirit? So you need a personal revelation of the Lord's table, you know, and that's going to help you with quite a lot of things um um you, you know um like paul says say, i received my instruction from the master himself and passed them over to you so you can also receive instruction concerning the lost table so for example at our church i received an instruction personally and because of that instruction the lord gave me a revelation we take communion every sunday every service is a communion service at our church you know, and I believe God that, you know, when we're a thousand, you know, 10,000, the Lord will make a way for us to still be able to uh, do the same thing. So um, we all need this personal revelation of, about the Lord's table. And the reason for this is in verse 27. It says, so if you eat the bread or drink the cup of the Lord in a way that does not fit his meaning, that is key. So we have to eat and we have to drink in a way that fits his meaning that's key that's important we must not we, mu we must not approach the lord's table anyhow that that doesn't mean that we should run away from it you know we 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 will not be gaining the full benefit it's just going to be another exercise and it will be like you know uh we are breaking the lord's body uh for this for the second time so now let's go to what the lord revealed to paul the first thing he said for I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, can you see, took bread, 
gave thanks, he broke it and said, Take it, this is my body, which was broken for you. These two in remembrance of me. After the same manner also took the cup, when he had sobbed, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as oft as you drink it in remembrance of me. Now, two important things, words, in that verses of scripture, the words that were, they were repeated for emphasis, and the words are, These do in remember, remembrance of me. So every time we take communion, we are celebrate we are celebrating the death and the resurrection of our lord jesus christ so that means if you do it once in a year that means you know if you take communion once in a year or you take it once in six months you are celebrating the death and the and the resurrection of our lord jesus christ once or twice you know uh in a year that's something that i want us to pay attention to there are some things that as we go to the scripture that has to do with communion at the end of the day, you will have to judge yourself. You will have to take your own personal instruction whether actually, you know, you just want to wait until you have communion at church service or is something that you can do by yourself. Because quite a lot of people don't actually know that they can take communion by themselves. You know, I'm going to, we're going to, I'm going to show you that in the scripture. We're going to read some scripture and uh, you will be surprised that actually is something that you can do uh, by yourself. So now, uh, the other thing I want us to see is that the one loaf of bread was broken. You know, we have one body but many parts, you know, and many parts. And one thing that I want us to note in this scripture is that Christ doesn't become fragmented in us, but rather we become unified in him. Every time you take the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, one thing that I want you to remind yourself, something that I want you to remember is the fact that you cannot reduce Christ to who you are, but rather Jesus Christ will raise you up to his level. So as you take the body of our Lord Jesus, you can literally say to yourself, say, Lord, I thank you, because as I take this bread, as I eat your body now, you are going to raise me up from whatever level I am now to the level where you want me to be. And I thank you for that. And that. Isn't that an amazing revelation? Can you just use your, see yourself, you know, that Christ raising you up to where he is. That's, that's what the scripture says, that he raised you up. So if you are sick, he will raise your body up from sickness. If you are poor, he will raise you up from poverty. Whatever, wherever you are, if you are done, he will raise you up. So if your enemies are laughing at you right now and say, oh, he's done, he can't get up again. So what do you do? Just take communion. As you do that, say, Lord, I thank you because I know that you are going to raise me up from this particular challenge that I'm facing in my life right now in the name of Jesus. Another thing is I said, this bread we eat is the bread of life. John 6, 35 say that, you know, we're going to read John chapter 6 and you're going to see amazing, amazing things there. You know, Jesus declare, declared, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never go hungry. So when you eat communion again, it's important for us to have this revelation. You will never go hungry. And you can, you can go away with that word that look. Uh, because, because I have eaten the body of our Lord Jesus Christ. I have eaten the bread of life. You know, I will live forever. I will not go hungry. So... I expect that the Lord will provide for me. You know, the Lord just reminded me now that can you imagine that they ate manna? The Bible even said that they ate manna in the wilderness and they died. They didn't have, it was the same food that they ate every day. And in that food, everything that they needed for their body to be strong was contained in that food. That food has every nutrient that they need to survive in the wilderness. Can you imagine that? That's what the body of our Lord Jesus Christ is going to do for you. Now, let's talk about the cup. You know, the New Testament, he said, this is my cup, the cup of the New Testament. The New Testament is established in the blood of Jesus. And this blood gives you a special status because it is precious. And that's the thing I want, you to, I want to talk about today. Um, in the last video, I spoke to you about the fact that the blood of Jesus purify. We purify your conscience. And the blood of Jesus is powerful because it's the only thing that has the ability to purify not just your body, 
your conscience. And we were even made to understand in Hebrews chapter 9 that the blood of Jesus was used to purify the things, the elements in the heavens. So you can see how precious, how important the blood of Jesus is. Now, let me read 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 18 to 19 for you to gain a better understanding, you know, of what the blood of Jesus uh, is all about. Say, for as much as you know that you were not redeemed with corruptible things as silver and gold, from your vain conversation received by tradition from your fathers, but with the precious blood of Christ as of a lamb without blemish and without spot, you were redeemed by this precious blood of Jesus Christ. So you are a precious jewel because you are redeemed by the precious blood of Jesus Christ. You are worth more than your pay at the end of the month. Uh, today is 7th of May, uh, but let me tell you, they look at you at the end of the month and they just determine, they pay you the same amount of money, that that's what you are worth. You couldn't even get more than that, even though you think you should be any more than that. But let me tell you something. Uh, you are worth more than your pay. And that's why God gave his only begotten son to die for your sin. You are more valuable than the way you have been treated by your colleagues, your government, friends, and family. Every time your husband looked down on you, you just smile, say, you, 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 don't, you don't know. Uh, you don't know, you know, how important I am to God. Every time your your wife looked out on you just smile i say you don't know how important i am to god i'm so important that god couldn't redeem me with gold silver you know he has to send his only begotten son to die for me uh, it's always said that the true value of a thing is determined by the price of the highest bidder do you know that devil is out to take you that was what he planned to do in the garden of eden you know he planned to take adam and eve but thank God because, because God came on the scene and God rescued them, prevented them from eating the, uh, the, 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 the tree of life so that, you know, we don't live, you know, uh, permanently in our sins. So God outbid everyone, including the devil, to get you by purchasing you with the blood of Jesus. God did this because he thinks highly of you. I, I love the scripture in the book of Psalms that said that Lord is thinking about me. All the thoughts of God towards you are good and they are not evil. His thought is to give you the future that you hope for. His thought is to give you the expected and your plan to give you a, a, a hope uh, in, in your final outcome, to give you something good in your final outcome. So I want you to know that the blood of Jesus is of infinite value. It is highly esteemed. For his spiritual value. The blood of Jesus, we were told in Hebrew 9, like I said, was the only thing that was used to purify the things in heaven. The blood of Jesus make you, makes you holy in the presence of God. Won't you just join me today to thank God for the blood of Jesus? Come on, you are not a commoner. You are very special to God, courtesy of the, of the blood of Jesus. So when you come to the table of the Lord, it is a table where you remember that you were given a special status because of the blood of Jesus. Lord, we pray today for every single person that is sick. Lord, your word says that your blood is able to purify. It has the capacity to, to make clean whatever ailments, sickness, whatever it is that is in our body. Lord, I ask today all every single person watching right now with um, the blood condition something is wrong with their circulatory system either the 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 heart the blood system whatever it is lord i ask in jesus name that they be made whole in the name of jesus lord you showed me in matthew chapter 8 that you healed every single person that came to you so that you might make clear the meaning you know of what was written about you in isaiah chapter 53 lord i ask you today let every single person watching today know that you have taken away their sicknesses and their diseases and right now let them discover that it is no longer there in jesus name lord i thank you for all these miracles 
And I thank you for all this healing in the mighty name of Jesus. Let me tell you something today. You will be shocked. You will be surprised at the next result. Even the doctors will be shocked and they will be surprised at the next result. Let me tell you something. This, this is the word of the Lord. This, this is not my words. They are the word from the Spirit. You will be shocked and you will be surprised at the next test result. The doctors will be shocked and they will be surprised at the next test result because things will have in, improved dramatically that everyone will testify that this is a miracle and it's only God can do it. You know, that can only happen by the power in the blood of Jesus. Don't forget the word of the Lord say, for we overcame him by the blood of the land and by the word of our testimony. What is the word of our testimony? We confess, we declare what the blood of Jesus Christ has done for us and what the blood of Jesus Christ will do for us. I want to ask somebody to say yes to Jesus before I leave today. You know, Jesus Christ came. He died for you. He came. The Bible says, Behold the lamp of God that take away the sin of the world. You don't have to walk around carrying the guilt, carrying the shame. You know, I know, especially for uh, uh, people of no color, they, they just think that, oh, what do I need? I, I don't need God, you know, because I got everything that I have. You know, God is not just there to meet your need. He wants to be your God. He, he, he wants to have a personal relationship with you. You know that there is a void in your heart. There is a gap. There is a hole. There is something about you saying that I, I, need, the, I need more. Um, there, there is something about you that say I can have a better life. You know, I can be born again. Let me put it that way. And you want to take that decision today. You want to know God. You just say, like, you know what? You know, science may say whatever they like. Uh, there are evidences, there are facts, but I know that there is more that I need to know. Let me say something to you. The realm of the spirit is real, is there. The fact that you cannot see it does not mean that it does not exist. I, I, I give you an example. As you are watching me right now, do you know how many data that is in the, is in the air? Do you know how many voices that have been exchanged in the air? But you cannot see them because you do not have the right equipment for you to be able to see what's going on right now uh, is the same thing for you to be able to know what's going on in the spiritual realm in God's side to know whether God is real or not. You need to enter through Jesus. So if you want to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and as your Savior, you want to begin that journey. You want to experience the supernatural. I keep saying this to people. Accepting Jesus Christ into your life is not about coming to church. My invitation is not to invite you to Jesus, uh, if not to invite you to church. My invitation is to invite you to Jesus. I want you to have a personal revelation of our Lord Jesus Christ. So if you want to say yes to him, I want you to say these prayers after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I confess that I am a sinner. I repent of my sin today. I believe you died for me so I can have eternal life. I ask you to come into my heart. Be my Lord and Savior. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you so much. Uh, if you say that prayers, I want you to do one more thing for me. Uh, shortly, you're going to see our address uh, on the screen. You're going to see the email number and the telephone number. If you do get in touch with us at any time you're watching this video, we'd like to send some materials to you free of charge that is going to help you grow spiritually we're going to send some books to you you know that is just going to help you grow spiritually and uh, if you have questions you need counseling you need support prayer financial support whatever kind of support please do get in touch with us and the lord is going to help us to be able to support you i want to encourage you to find a fellowship around you that you can be part of we do a lot of online series we have bible studies every friday and we do this you know uh, daily on Facebook, you can be part of it. If you want more information about our fellowship, also email us or call us or send a text message to us, and then we will give you more information. May God Himself, the God who makes everything holy and whole, make you holy and whole. 
put you together, spirit, soul, and body, and keep you fit for the coming of our Master Jesus Christ. The one who called you is completely dependable. If he said it, he will do it. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget, um, go to YouTube, look for Heaven of Glory channel, and subscribe to all our videos so that every time we upload new video, you can get the alert. And I want to also encourage you, please share this video uh, with your friend. Let's, let's, let's get some revelation. Like I said, you know, Paul received a personal revelation about he received special instruction. What I'm believing God for, God for is that in this series, you will also receive a personal instruction on how and when to approach the Lord's table. Until I come your way at uh, same time tomorrow, 10 p.m. UK time. God bless you and bye.